Hey guys, welcome to the next video in the Max Script video series. And in this video, we'll just take a look at the code that we had uh, run in the previous video. So on the left hand side, we have the Max Script editor, and this is the code that we had run. And on the right hand side, we have the perspective viewport in which we see the output. So for the sake of simplicity, we'll use this code, which is similar, but yields this kind of an output. So let's take a look at a couple of terms in Max Script. In the first line, we have a variable to which we have assigned a value. The variable has a name and we assign a value using the equal to sign. In the second line, we have written a loop. This loop goes from one to five, which means it will run a specific piece of code about five times. The code that we need to run a specific number of times is encapsulated within round brackets. That's why we open up the round brackets in the third line and we close the round brackets in the 10th line and lines four to nine are the code which will be run about five times. In line number four, we change the value of the variable by incrementing it once each time the loop runs. That means the first time the loop runs, the counter will be one and the fifth time the loop runs, the counter will be five. In the fifth line, we are creating another variable called tp and we are assigning it a value which is returned by a function called tpot. Now this is a function or you can call it a constructor function. This tpot is defined by 3D Studio Max. This basically is a class and when we run the constructor function of a class, it returns an object. That means every time the loop runs, we are creating a new teapot and assigning it to the variable tp. That's why in the viewport you see about five teapots created. The object of a specific class will have a couple of properties which are defined in the class itself. tp.name is a name property and we are assigning the name as teapot underscore and appending the counter as a string. Because the type of the counter variable is a number, or an integer, we need to convert it to a string. In the seventh line, we change the scale to 0 0.25 in x, y, and z. In the eighth line, we are asking Max to change the position of the teapot in the x axis. So if you see, every time the loop runs, the teapot is offset by 10 times the current value of x. So the first teapot will be at position 10 in X axis and the fifth teapot will be at position 50 in the X axis. In the ninth line, we are changing the wire color of the teapot. The type of the wire color is a color and we define it by using the keyword color and providing the R, G and B values. So if you see every time a teapot is created, we are changing the red color to be a multiple of 50. That means the first time the loop is run, red color will be 50. And the fifth time the loop is run, the red color will be 250. These color values go from 0 to 255. So the next thing that we'll take a look at is a function. If you would like to run a piece of code multiple times, you can group it. A group of these lines of code can be called as function. So in the first line, we see that we have written a function named create teapots. So to define the function, we write the keyword function followed by the function name, and then we use the equal to sign. Then as we earlier encapsulated a piece of code within two round brackets for the loop, we similarly encapsulate a piece of code within two round brackets. So we can see that the function create teapots has been assigned a specific number of uh, lines of code, which is from three to 12. And this is being encapsulated within the round brackets, which are opened at line number two and closed at line number 13. So instead of writing this code again and again, we just have to evaluate this function once. And then whenever we want to create these teapots, we can just run the create teapots function followed by the round brackets and it'll give you the output which you see in the perspective viewport. So that is it for the video guys and thank you so much for watching.